Uh, what's going on? Uh, oh, it's just lagging. Hello? Hey, what's up? Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Uh, hold yeah. on one sec. Yeah, Discord okay. was lagging a little bit when I called. I don't know why. Um, can you hear me though? Yeah, I can hear you perfectly. Okay, cool. Just um, yeah. Okay, so yeah, uh, cool to get to the lesson from you. By the way, appreciate you taking the time to do this. Yeah, of course, man. I appreciate you uh, paying me for it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, I, did you get the the file I sent you? I by the did. Way? Yeah. So um, yeah. Can we start with like a quick introduction from you, like for the stream and for me, like where you're from, how long you've been playing, like general relationship to the game. Uh, sure, yeah, uh, so my tag is Cell, uh, I've been playing for about six years, uh, I am a Falco player, I like, uh, I don't really have much else beyond that, I mean, I, I, I like the game. Have you been going uh, to tournaments pretty... for the whole time? No, not very much at all. Okay, okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, that was that was good. I just, I like last time I did my lesson, I realized like, mo like it's kind of weird. Me, you don't even know how long somebody's been playing or something like that. So, sure, sure. All right. Yeah. So let's go over. I guess the slippy, and then we can we can play, or we can. You want to play first, and then go over this this slippy, or go over this slippy and then play. Um. It doesn't really matter. It's so, up to you. Uh. Okay, so there's so I I don't know if you uh, if you remember, but I mentioned that I might not have Ethernet, so I'm I'm not so that's this is right now one of those times where I don't have any uh, access to a cable. Okay, no worries. So we can play, we can play Wi-Fi, but I'm not sure how it'll be. We can try it if you want. But... Okay, let's just test it really quick and see how that works. But sure, it, sure. Thankful, thankfully for rollback, like you can get away with like a little bit, a little bit worse connection. For sure. All okay. right, I'll, I'll drop my uh, okay. code here Sounds real good. quick. Yeah. Mine is up there. Okay. Somebody said they've done SoCal Wi-Fi before and it's been fine on Slippy. Okay. Well, you just got to try it. All right. Okay. Searching. Are you searching? Uh, almost. One okay. second. Okay. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, I mean it's skipping a little bit. I wouldn't want to play tournament on this, but we can we can try it a little bit. Okay, for sure. <laughs> it's a little rough. <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah, it's, it got really yeah, it like suddenly got really choppy. Um, all right, let's just go over the vod for now then. It was it was almost it was like so close. <laughs> it was so close to working. Yeah, for like like five seconds. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. So yeah, we can can we screen share? Is that yeah? How that's works? what I'm gonna do. Okay. Otherwise, it's a little too laggy on stream. Okay. Gonna turn on this. What is, um, uh, can I not, there we, I think, there we go, okay, okay. Okay, can you see it? 
Uh, I think so. It's like showing a loading screen. Um. Oh, you know, maybe it's streaming like the wrong window or something somehow. I'll just do the screen share, I guess. Is it working now? Okay. Uh, yeah, I see it now. Okay. Okay. So I don't know, like, also for the format of this, like, do you want me to, like, point out anything that I'm, like, thinking, or should you just watch and then you, you'll you point out things? Yeah, so basically I just need a little bit to sort of get a feel for things, and then we can talk a little bit more about it. Because normally if I got to play you a little bit, then I'd sort of have, like, like, basically I'm looking for, like, a direction to sort of, like, latch onto so I can start figuring out exactly what to help you on. Gotcha, gotcha. So I'm just going to kind of watch through this a little bit first. I have some ideas already, but I want to see okay, what happens. That's good. Standard. Very intentional. Okay, so I actually feel like I got a really good feeling of your issues by watching just that one game. So that was a really useful game to watch. Awesome. Um, so what are your general thoughts on the matchup? Like, what do you feel like you're good at? What do you feel like you struggle with? Or just, like, any other thoughts you might have on it before I go into what I could see from watching that? Um, yeah, so I think my... I don't know. I think my general feeling is um, currently my I have a, a the mentality that like I need to focus on lasering in place at a spacing where if he power shields wherever like spacing he is relative to me, I can jump over it if I shoot another laser in place. And then while I'm doing these, I can react to what he does. So like if he takes laser and then dashes forward or like take laser and then full hops or shield laser full hops or like take laser up tilt or take laser dash back like I'm able to react to these things and I'm safe versus most like things he can do in place and then like if he decides to move forward I can play a scrap with him uh, but like the scrap situations I'm not great at recognizing like what they're going to end up being
being and like how much frame advantage or disadvantage I'm going to be in and like what my best options are in those situations. Mm -hmm. uh, then also like I'm just not great at like recognizing the types of openings I get versus Fox and like how to convert them into the like biggest possible punish I think. Right. And yeah. Then, yeah. I definitely noticed that. Um, yeah. Any, anything then, like, else? My edge guard were. Yeah, like, it felt like, as an extension of that, like, my edge guards were not great, but, like, part of that is sometimes I just don't really know, like, what's the best thing to do if he's, like, up being at a certain spacing or something, like, uh, I don't know, like, and then, like, accounting for, like, it feels like there's probably a lot of situations where I can cover more than I'm just trying to, like, like, I don't need to read as much, I can just, like, cover a lot, but, like, I don't really know what those situations are it's it's i don't know it feels like there's so much that's kind of nebulous and confusing to me because there's also things actually one other thing that i'm i'm not great at dealing with is so the things that i struggle with are like when he's on the platform like finding a way to engage with him in a way that's like relatively safe and then like still able to like threaten him uh like because like sometimes i jump shine or like i go for like a jump back air or something mm -hmm. like full hop back air with my back to him but it's like I go for that too often, I think. And so like often he just sometimes will wait for me to whiff my full hop back air and he run runs under me and then hits me. Uh and that's kind of annoying. But like I think my counter should be to like my ground more often, but then I don't know how often I need to be doing that and how often I should be calling him out for doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I have a lot of thoughts, but uh, Yeah, this, okay. Always... Your thoughts actually line up very well with what I saw during the match. So Okay, so I'll, I'm just going to basically list out, like, my initial thoughts, and then we can kind of go over the match again and sort of point out the specific instances where that manifests. Sure. So, okay, so first of all, to the point you were saying with um, the openings, I there's, like, this very, like, I can feel it through watching. There's, like, this very clear thing where, like, your movement is so much better in neutral than in punish like when you're punishing like you'll literally land a hit like you're like all right all right i'm like watching him what's he doing what's he doing like playing careful and then you get a hit and you're like oh no i got the hit what do i do what do i do like i got the hit like there's like this feeling that like he's about to totally get out of my combo and like what do i do like i better just try to hit him like before he gets out of it and then you hit him and you're just kind of like okay i got him like oh no there he goes like what am i gonna do now and like so you can like even just by watching that like i was totally able to feel that we're like there's just like sort of like a lack of confidence in the punish game where i think because okay so there's probably a couple reasons for that and okay so if actually okay so first of all i'll go into the other issue the, the really big issue that i noticed is that you're not like you don't act, you don't try to like really hit him very much and i think that's part of that is like a symptom of the way you think about lasers so i did i noticed you doing like the repeated laser in place thing and the thing is is like you're not really so okay so like the goal is you're trying the goal of the game to kill your opponent right and you're trying to get a kill so the way you get a kill is you get a kill setup and the way to get a kill setup is to hit him in a place where you can combo into a kill setup. And I, so I think, like, the way you're kind of looking at it is not directed enough to towards the goal of getting his stock taken. And it's much more of, like, okay, I'm going to laser him and then try to just react to what happens and try to move out of the way or throw out a hitbox that will prevent him from winning like a sort of micro situation and um yeah totally so it's sort of like if you're paying attention to too much to how to block somebody's punches or whatever you're never actually going to hit the guy because hey. it's like your intention overall needs to be that you're trying to you're trying to land one of your moves and everything you're doing is needs to be directed towards that and so like basically there were just there's no aggression coming out from your falco and so 
he doesn't have to play fair, basically. Because he doesn't have to be threatened that after your laser, an approach is coming. So, I know this is sort of like a lot of info. I'm, I'm sort of trying to get around the whole concept of it, and then we'll get to yeah. we'll hopefully reach a point where it makes makes more sense so i i think it, it does make sense my my only thought is like i just like because i agree that i should try to hit him but the question is like i feel like i don't understand how to hit him in a way that's like effective and not mm -hmm. like super risky right okay so all right let's take a look at the match so, I so if he's on the platform here, I actually really wouldn't recommend doing this, because. Okay, so it's very easy for me to get sidetracked and get onto the platform stuff. Let's leave the platform stuff for a second, okay? <laughs> Let's pretend that he's you're already both on the ground. So. What is so when you're shooting the lasers, your goal seems to kind of be to prevent him, from dashing at you maybe yeah like basically i'm trying to mitigate the threat of running shine running up smash running power shield or running mm -hmm. in air you play okay so this you know lowercase hero says he plays you a lot on unranked <laughs> that's just some guy in my chat but okay. Oh, okay okay so okay so a big one is you need to be dash dancing in between your lasers this so yeah this is like a very like sort of like even if you don't really understand exactly why you should be dash dancing you should be and because okay so he dashes okay so so look at this so oh what what just happened whoa oh my gosh <laughs> slippy what are you doing okay is this actually rewound all the way okay it is it's, sorry it's just weirding me out hey you're fine Okay, so in this situation, he's not coming in at all. He's actually just standing in place and kind of full hopping, right? And so what you want to be doing is you don't ever want to be wasting time, I guess. Like, if you're kind of trying to zone someone, it's not really about the time that's passing, but if someone is sort of giving you space or giving you an opportunity to put yourself in a better position... You, you don't want to just stay in the same position. So basically, this guy is playing really passive, and he's giving you an opportunity to basically start pressuring and be more aggressive, but you're not taking it. Because, so basically, if you just sit there lasering, he could basically just also sit there full hopping and getting lasered, and the match would never progress, because you're not doing anything that can lead to... A good reward on your end like it's like a risk reward thing and you don't have any risk but you also don't have any reward out of it and if you leave it up to him to create a situation where there's more reward possibility for you it's not gonna be the one you want because he's not trying to get into a situation that you want right so um, it's kind of huh Sorry, yeah, I was just thinking, so, like, so in this position where, like, the, the video is paused, like, where would, like, I guess, like, you you would imagine that, like, maybe Mango might, like, in this spot would just, like, dash back, dash in, approaching laser, like, like, not fully, but, like, just enough to land right at the, like, at the, yeah, like, right, uh, at, right, at, right, to use, so Fox is giving you space, so you can take a little bit of space to put yourself in a position where you have, um, you know, options to apply pressure at all, to, like, because at this distance, even if you did a, f a perfectly long short hop dare or short hop nair, you would never actually reach him. So, you don't want to be in this situation. I mean, okay, so the thing is, it's okay to be in this situation. So, But your goal, eventually, is to create a situation where you hit him. So, it's like, you're not in a bad situation here, 
But if he's the one who, who closes the gap, he gets to choose when the gap is closed. And that you might be in the middle of a laser, it might be an awkward timing. But if you're the one that closes the gap, even if you don't commit to anything and you're not actually risking yourself, you're creating a situation where you know that exactly when the gap is being closed and you're, so you're putting yourself in a situation where you sort of have like, you're controlling the pace. Because you're just you're deciding when the situation changes from this totally safe, far away from each other spot to a situation where you might have to start worrying about getting hit, and so that puts right. you at an advantage, even though it seems kind of equal. Like it's you're still in an advantage there because you're the one choosing when it happens. Yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense. So yeah, he goes up to the platform. So even if you did do this laser approach here, it wouldn't do any good. It, these, this is this is like a totally separate thing, so we're still going to keep ignoring the platforms for a second. This is fine. Okay. This is fine. So now you're in this situation again. Where... Oh man, what is going on with Slippy? Okay, okay, so now you're in this situation again. And you're once again creating a situation where like he can't hit you, but you're not actually getting anything against him. Ba like basically laser damage isn't a thing. Not in this matchup. Against maybe, you know, Puff, Peach, it's kind of kind of is. But against Fox, you can kill him at zero. Laser damage is basically negligible. Like, it's not something you should really be thinking about. So, you want to see your lasers as a way for you to make the choice to create, this, cr to create a dangerous situation on your terms. So, right. this is that thing again where it's like, you have a laser out. Like, look at right where it is. You can, you choose how this situation plays out. And oh, the other thing is you mentioned the whole power shield, you need to be able to jump over it thing. Literally delete that from your brain for, like, at least a year. <laughs> like, that, that will not be relevant to you until you have, until you are so far past where you are that it's literally not a thing. And if you're even considering it, it's, it's going to throw you off. Don't think about that at all. <laughs> honestly. And don't, don't, honestly, don't really even worry too much about the height of the laser right now. Because the, the import, huh? Sorry, I was just going to say, do you... No, no, it, anything you want to you wanna add helps me understand your perspective, and it'll help me tailor the advice better, so... Go ahead. Uh, okay, for sure. Um, yeah, I was just going to say, like, so do you mean this matchup specifically, or just, like, generally? The deleting power shield, jump over power shield thing? I would say pretty much just ignore that in general. <laughs> like, because the number of times that someone is actually going to power shield your lasers and is going to be at a range where you can jump over the power shielded laser like most of the time if they power shield a laser and you and you're and the right choice is to shoot another laser they're going to be so far away that even if you just let the laser like let the reflected laser hit you you wouldn't really be in any danger and if they're close enough, where they're running up and they do like a laser, a perfect shield right in front of you to reflect your laser, you're not going to have time to do a second laser anyway. Yeah, that that's actually very true in my experience. Like, you, you're just talking about it, but that's literally what's happened to me in the past. Like, mm -hmm. when I've been playing with this concept is literally sometimes they just hit me with the power shield because they're so far and it doesn't matter. Or mm -hmm. they hit me so close, like, it doesn't also doesn't matter. I get hit. <laughs> exactly. I or not, yeah. <laughs> so, like, literally delete it from your brain. You can relearn it in a year. Like, don't worry about it. Just, it's gone. Like, throw it in the trash. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fair. The, the, the important thing for you to think about is how much horizontal space you're taking or giving up with the laser that's it that's the only thing you need to be considering outside of the platform stuff but we can get into that so it's like okay. when you're on the ground with somebody so you're in this situation the laser's out he's right here so you're kind of at a spacing where like if he shields the laser you could just land like a dare shield pressure on him not that you would always yeah. do that, but you're at a, you're in a you're in a, so the thing is from his perspective, if you were some random moron Falco, which I can tell you're trying very hard not to be a random moron Falco, and that's a very good sign. <laughs> but <laughs> it's important not to go too far the other direction where you forget why the random moron Falcos exist, and it's that Falco has extremely strong aggressive pressure. 
So it's like right, right. the fact that the, your dare might be coming here is scary for him. Like this is a very scary range for Fox. And if I'm playing Fox here, I'm thinking, okay, this laser is coming. I can take laser, and then I have to be really afraid of his approach. I can shield. I'm still afraid of his approach. I can move back. I'm in the corner even more. Or I can full hop to the platform, in which case Falco can still get a decent pressure on me from this distance. Because let's say I full hop to the platform, and then let's just say, for the sake of argument, you happen to run up full hop dare or run up Waveland Shine on the platform. Those are both very scary for Fox. So in my, when I'm in this situation as Fox, I'm kind of like, okay, I really need to be paying close attention to what Falco is going to do here. And a lot of times Foxes will even try to, you know, maybe take laser and then whiff punish a down air, like an approaching down air. And then you can get around that by doing like fake approaches, like a down air and then you fade back and stuff like that. So the, but the important thing is to know that in this situation, like you should feel powerful here. You shouldn't feel like, okay, well, I kept Fox away for just another moment, but, like, now I have to shoot another laser and hope he does something that I can punish. What you should be thinking here is, like, all right, like, I literally am about to get stunned on him, and I'm already in a threatening range. Like, this is very scary for Fox. Mm, okay. So, so he gets hit by this laser. If you had just jumped in and down aired, maybe you would have hit him. You could also be... so. Okay, so here's, here's your main mix-up here. And, okay, so first of all, you want to be dash dancing after every laser. Because that just mixes things up a little bit. Or not every laser, but most lasers, okay? So basically just do that every time. At least one or two dash dances after every laser, okay? So, but the thing is, is so you're here. You basically have two pressure options in this situation. One is to short hop. You can see my mouse, right? Yeah, yeah. One is to short hop right here and laser directly in front of him, which combos into shine or grab or, I mean, kind of into grab, but mostly into shine, depending on the range. Or you can do a, a short hop down air. And so it's like, if Fox, if I dash back here as Fox and you decide to do the approaching laser... Now I'm in an even worse spot where the laser... I'm in this spot where Fox is right here, but I'm getting hit by the laser here, and you're, like, where Fox is instead. And so that's really scary as Fox. Like, that's not fun at all. So, like, as Fox, I'm scared of that laser, but I'm also scared of you randomly down airing in. And so, like, I can tell when you're playing, when you're playing this, that is not what's going through your head at all. <laughs> you're like, all right, yeah. I, hit, I hit him with the laser, and I sure hope that I can get another laser out before the nair hits me. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I think the other thing is, uh, so I there was a time where I didn't play like this. I used, like, this is a recent thing, like like maybe even a year ago, I used to, like, do a lot of, like, uh, dash back, dash in approaching lasers mm -hmm. because we can part of my neutral. Mm -hmm. uh, and, like, what I found was often I was just getting full hop drilled or up tilted out of that. And so it felt really bad, and so I wasn't really sure how I could adjust my timings. So, like this has been like a like a general overhaul to how I approach the neutral to make it like much lower risk for me overall. But it's not like long term anything I want to do. It's just like something I've been playing with. Uh, but yeah, like I, I I think that you're you're for sure like like that this is also kind of unproductive because it doesn't feel like I'm actually threatening Fox in any way by doing this. Right. Part. So the important thing about this game also is that it's like. There, there's, like, eventually you're going to have to hit the guy. And if you're trying to hit the guy, you're inherently taking on risk. So there's never going to be a world in which you can beat your opponent without, be, without, without taking a risk. Unless they're extremely bad and he's dashing from right here and doing a full hop nair and just gives you a super easy opening four times in a row. Versus any decent opponent, you will not get free openings like that. And so, yeah. So the thing is, is you will always have to take risks. Even if you're sitting here and you shoot 900 lasers and he doesn't approach, and then he dashes up after the 901st laser and he's in your face, now you're in a risky situation. It just took a lot longer to get there. Right. So, so the important, the thing you got to burn into your brain is it's not about being safe. 
It's about taking risks on your terms. You want to all you those risks are going to happen whether you're running away the entire match or whether you're rushing the guy. But you want them to happen on your terms so that you can dictate when and how they happen. And that even though you'll sometimes get random like look at Mango. Mango gets up tilted hit hit out of his stuff all the time. It, but it's not about that. It's about creating because when you're in control of when and how these situations happen, the probability of you winning them goes up, and that's all that matters. Yeah, I definitely feel like I notice that like one mango gets hit way less out of his approaching lasers than most falcos because I think he's so good at stuttering his timings and winning the mix-ups. Mm -hmm. And also his defense is nuts. So like, his defense is incredible. Hit, his defense is like his <laughs> best aspect. <laughs> Yeah, and his so combo game. Even when he does get up tilted, it just doesn't matter. <laughs> mm-hmm. So okay, so part of the okay, so a big a big chunk in this a big thing to remember when you're trying to get better at this game is to not try to get better at every piece of it at once. So I would actually say like basically don't worry about it how much you take from getting up tilted or getting randomly hit out of stuff. Your goal is to just create situations where you feel like you were the one that... Like, if you if you decide, I'm going to dare into this guy, and he hits you out of it, he, he was still the one responding to you. It was still... It was your mistake to make because you dictated the situation. And then he responded in a way that beat it. And sure. so what you need to do is you need to focus very hard on creating the risky situation yourself and not letting him create it you need to be the one that's creating the scramble or the scrap or whatever you want to call it so you, it's like you choose the range you choose when it happens and you choose where it happens and so that even though you're going to get hit out of it a lot that allows you to tinker with the probability in ways that favor you yeah like you you know what kind of scrap you're getting into when you speak exactly you, you know yeah, what yeah. scrap you're getting into he has to worry about is falco gonna dare in or is he gonna laser in and there's situations that he, there's there's mix-ups that he can do that will beat both of those but he has to worry about what you're thinking and you, right, and right, you right. get to decide what's gonna happen because whether you laser or you dare in that's up to you and therefore, you have more control over the situation than he does by just responding to you. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so... <laughs> Someone said in chat, I'm not locked in here with you, you're locked in here with me. It's pretty much like that. <laughs> right. And so it's like, you really want to get in that mindset that, like, if the fox is just rushing you and he's being a moron, then by all means, you know, play defensive and hit him out of it. But at some point, he's going to realize that just rushing into you is getting him shined out of shield and laser shined and up tilted and all this stuff. And he's going to stop doing that. Even in, yeah, even the uh, most aggressive fox in the world will eventually have to stop rushing. And you'll get situations where you are the one that is able to control the pace. And even if someone's being super aggressive they have to worry about it like even if someone is trying to be super aggressive and you hit them with a laser this is falco's biggest strength as a character is that when as soon as he shoots that laser you're responding to him he's not responding to you ultimately you have to worry about you have to solve the problem of that laser as the other player right it's almost like so if i if i think about it as like a general tree of options like all of fox's aggressive tree like I can treat, I can like, I can choose to approach it in the, like, with this defensive tree of like lasering in place and like maybe sometimes like retreating down air or like back air in place. Yeah. Uh, but like, if he's choosing to just not engage, then like that opens up the ability for me to set up a scrap that's in my favor. Exactly. And so the thing that, the thing that Mango does is basically, it feels like Mango's always approaching, approaching his opponent and his opponent it doesn't, doesn't really like attack him that much. Most of the time. And the reason yeah. for that actually has is, is just because when his opponent tries to approach him, he just sort of nullifies it. Like, he's not trying to whiff punish every, every attack. Like, he's not trying to be like, oh, you attacked me? Bam, I got you. 
his opponent will attack him, and he'll just sort of reset to neutral until he gets a situation where he's dictating the situation, and then he's going, and then he goes in. So it feels like yeah. this person's throwing themselves at Mango over and over, but they're not even able to approach him because he's just getting out of the way, he's staying safe, he's resetting to neutral, and then he'll find like a little hole in their approaching pattern not to even hit them, just so that he can gain control of... I call it activity, but it's just basically whoever chooses what, when and where the situation occurs. He'll wait until... Like, he basically is able to maintain neutral and not try to, like, whiff punish people until he can get a situation where he can decide what's going to happen, and then he's really good at pushing in on that. So it feels like no matter how much somebody tries to approach Mango, they don't really get to approach Mango. Because he's, his defense is good, he gets out of the situation. But when he chooses to approach, he can use Falco's tools very well to sort of force the situation. Even if he doesn't necessarily get an opening out of it, he's forcing his opponent to respond to him rather than responding to his opponent. Yeah, for sure. I, I agree that like that seems like how Mango like builds his entire game plan, which is pretty good. That's definitely the best way to play Falco, especially. Other characters too, but Falco in particular, with if Falco does not play in a way where his opponent is reacting to him, he has a much harder time. For sure, for sure. Okay. So look, so here he's walking in. So look, he walks in right here, and you get this laser. And so even though this fox is acting like a total idiot and he's walking into Falco lasers where he can easily get hit out of, he gets scared. Even though you're totally committed to just lasering over and over, he gets scared. Watch, you laser him again. He shines, and then... He oh, wait, actually, no, I think... I sorry, I, it was a little bit earlier that he did that dash back. It's right here, where... Oh, yeah, yeah. He gets scared for, like, you laser him, and he's just like, okay, definitely Falco's gonna come in with a dare here. But you don't, you shoot under laser. So now, he gave up space, because he got scared. Like, you were lasering, right? And he got closer, then you lasered again, and he thought you were gonna aerial, so he runs away. But instead yeah. of being like, oh, you're running away, I'll do an approaching laser here to keep you, f to, to create a situation where now you're more cornered and I have more control, you decline the opportunity to take more control and you continue lasering. So he's like, oh, okay, I guess I'll just get closer. But it, so basically you never, that was like five seconds and there was never a point, like let's say, let's say you just suddenly could see the future for like that five seconds and you everything worked out perfectly according to plan like literally every frame was exactly as how you hoped it would occur there was not a single chance in there for you to land a decent hit because you didn't try to that's true yeah like you, you no matter what you would have never gotten it <laughs> yeah i i think like the point ultimately of what i'm doing like this strategy i'm playing with now is like i'm hoping eventually they're going to try to like take laser and then like come at me and so i can practice like playing the scrap when they're running into me or mm -hmm. if they take laser and then dash full hop over me so i can repractice reacting to the full hop because that's like another thing i've been working on is reacting to fox's full hop mm -hmm. with like good options because like right. sometimes i get into this thing where like i laser and then like i i see the fox full hop but i don't stop lasering it's just so fast that like I, I press B like as I'm jumping for no reason. Mm -hmm. So like I'm trying to like train myself to like have the reaction of like see the fox full hop and then like either up tilt or dash back like short hop back air it on reaction. Mm -hmm. Or like at, at the very least roll away so I don't get hit. Right. Okay, yeah, no, I I think that it's a good idea to do that, but it's like it okay so it's fine to practice that and be a little bit less effective while you're practicing that like it's it's something that is good to practice but in terms of like what you need to work on right now i think so so basically try it's like everything kind of gets built up in a certain order but people don't really real it's very difficult to know what exactly the order that you should build in it's kind of like trying to learn math out of order. Like, you can't really learn it out of order. You have to know the prerequisites in order to understand the next thing that comes up. But it would be like if there was no order to the math classes. 
So it's like no, there was no, no one gave you an order for the math classes. So you were just sort of taking them randomly and being like, "Whoa, this makes no sense to me. Like I'm dumb." And it's like, no, no, yeah. you just didn't take a prerequisite class to understand this situation. Because, so here's the thing: is Fox will be doing those approaching full hops and stuff like that. But the reason Fox will be doing those... So basically, you're Falco, you're taking control of these situations, right? You're, you maintain neutral, you find, an, you find an opportunity to take control. You're taking control of the situation, Fox is, has to deal with it. It's very frustrating as the Fox, because the Falco is controlling situations in such a way where it's really hard to really open him up, and if you mess up as the Fox or make a wrong choice and the Falco reads you, he gets a big opening. So as the fox, there's this feeling that Falco is kind of like, it's my turn. Oh, it's my turn again. Oh, it's my turn again. It's my turn again. Then the fox is gets frustrated and they go, you know what? No, it's my turn. And then they just throw out something. And it's that situation. Then you react to it with the stuff you were talking about. But if right, you're just right. waiting for the fox to eventually throw something out, you'll never really be able to react to it. Like, fox will... like you're only going to be able to react to Fox throwing stuff out when you've already gotten activity or like when you, you've already gotten, like it's already in your court, the ball's in your court, and then he gets frustrated and tries to throw it right back, then you're kind of more ready for it. it and it also, it just, it's because you're like, you set up situation A, he's like, all right, I get out of situation A. You're like, okay, I set up situation B. He's like, okay, I get out of situation B. And then when you do C... And then he goes, you know what? No, I'm going to do my option here. You already knew you were setting up for C and that he might try to push back on C. And then you can, right. you're, you're mentally, you're, you're, you don't, it's not like a, it's not like a raw reaction. It's, it's like a targeted reaction where you know that it can only be a few options if he wants to push back against what you're already doing. Yeah. So you're, you're saying like, I should like, basically err on the side of like setting up an aggressive mix-up for myself more often and then and like early on and then later like predict that he might eventually get impatient and then try to like aggress on me and then i can start doing like these defensive mix-ups so, like, right exactly yeah. because if you end up in a situation where fox is like am i coming in or i'm coming in just kidding i'm coming in just kidding i'm coming in just kidding i'm coming in ha oh, wasn't kidding that time how are you supposed to react to that you know compared to you going it's my turn and he goes oh and he goes my turn and he goes oh and you go it's my turn he goes no it's my turn and then you go okay well all right i'll just counter that you know <laughs> right i like the analogy <laughs> that makes a lot of sense <laughs> so that just sets up into a situation where it'll feel a lot better from your end and it'll it'll put you mentally down like a sort of tree branch where when he does these things you'll be more ready to react to them yeah this is like this is actually really helpful because this is like a good macro neutral approach I, I don't really have like a structured macro game plan so this is useful good 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 okay so let me, I'm trying to get, trying to find a point that um, okay. Okay, all this was like pretty much fine. I'm just gonna try to get to the part where I'm thinking of. Yeah, all this stuff is like, you, you should have been trying to hit him at some point here. <laughs> like he was messing up yeah, over and over yeah. and you just didn't go for anything. But I'm back that was really bad. <laughs> okay, so now you're in this situation. Oh, okay, you mess up tech skill right there. Yeah. Okay, obviously you really need to go for a dash dance grab or something there. Cause this is the situation okay, this is this is not exactly the situation I was thinking of, but this is so important. Oh come on. Okay, so actually I have a thought about it. I don't yes. know if you like so my my feeling in that spot is I don't like uh, risk reward. Sometimes of, I guess this is actually maybe you're right. This specific situation is fine. I was thinking like sometimes I don't like grabbing Fox in in raw neutral. Like 
it just the risk reward of it feels not great because uh, if I get spot dodge shined, if he converts well off the shine, it's really bad. But I guess like in this spot, if I grabbed him, it's like I'm getting a forward throw at the ledge, which is pretty huge. Even That's what I was gonna say. Yeah, is it, it's the the difference is you're in the corner, and that forward throw is massive. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. that is huge. And if he spot dodges there, and you randomly forward smash, he's dead anyway. He's very scared right there. Yeah, that's a good point. He's very I'm scared. Just like, yeah, I'm like so tunneled on like covering roll in, but yeah, like I think I should err more on like punishing and shielding in the corner. You so gotta, directly. you gotta recognize how terrified people are, Falco. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's kind of weird because in real life you're like you know how strong or weak you are. Like you try to lift something and it's too heavy for you, you go okay, therefore I'm not strong enough. But the thing is, is Falco, the character of Falco, can go, like, way beyond, like, Mango, you know? Like, the character of Falco is this terrifying monster that can just tear through the whole cast. And in the game, even if you're not that good, you can remember that, like, you're still playing Falco. Like, right, even, if, right. <laughs> even if you're not that, like, even if you're skinny... And fat at the same time, Falco is 400 pounds of pure muscle. <laughs> and, like, right. your opponent, even if you're not even that good at the game, when your opponent is shielding in the corner and Falco is right there, your opponent is terrified. <laughs> like, sure. you have to recognize how scary Falco actually is. Yeah, that's, that's so look, point. in this situation, he can't even spot us. This is a guaranteed opening. You could dare him here, you could nair him here, you could grab him here. This is this is a nasty opening. As Fox right here, I would literally, my thought that would go through my head is, oh, I'm dead. <laughs> uh, yeah. I okay, literally so would feel dead. <laughs> okay, do you mind backing up, like, two seconds? I just want to see I how can I try, got yeah. I just want to see, like, because I'm not sure if I could have was able to. Yeah, right. I guess I could have reacted to the laser being, like, guaranteed to hit his double jump like that, and then I should have just comboed it into something. Like, this is a guaranteed kill from your side. That's yeah, yeah, you're right, He's, you're he's right. dead. Yeah, that was so, bad. And then you're right here, and then you're like, okay, I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> I really thought he was. Gonna, to be fair, I really thought he was gonna roll there, but I yeah. I should it's just like like, like you got the guy on the ground. He's bleeding from his mouth. You got the you got the knife to his throat, and then you're like you jump back, and you're like, whoa! I thought he was about to try something. <laughs> it's like no, dude, you had it. Just 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 pull back. Like it's over. <laughs> like just, just end him. Oh my god. <laughs> That's a great analogy. But instead, you just go back to neutral. Why? He was dead. You had him. All right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So, okay. So, I, even though this isn't bad, like, necessarily, right here where you're waiting for him to drop into the up tilt, this is, like, one of the clear... This is, like, the clearest possible situation of, like... Even though you're in a situation where, like, it's really easy to react to, because he gets to choose when the situation happens, you still miss the reaction. Because it's a raw reaction. Yeah. You're this just going, like okay, the second he drops, I'm going to hit it. What were you going to say? No, I was just going to say this is, like, exactly like, like, this is like Fox being able to set the pace almost. Right? Exactly. Like, this is like, yeah, yeah. So it's like, it doesn't really matter what you do here, as long as you don't try to just raw react to this. Like, what you'd be better off doing is, if he drops, you dash, you dash, jump away, laser back towards him. Because that creates a situation where now he has to react to your laser, and he has to raw react to whatever you do, rather than you reacting to what he's doing. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Because he's right here, and you're like, okay, you're like going and like, trying to catch a sword... Like, is it swinging at you or something? <laughs> and it's like, no, no, you're not going to get this because he could drop... He could wait up here for three minutes. He could wait up here for six minutes and then drop this. You yeah, never, you don't know. You have no you have no way to determine that, and so it's not a... You, you, you don't want that situation. He has total control there. So, so you think I shouldn't, like, even mess with trying to, like, directly challenge his drop from the platform? Like, I should just back off there. No, no, no. You can directly challenge... Like, okay, here's the thing is, like... Getting the opening is not 
what you necessarily want. You want to get closer to getting the opening. So, like, oh, I should space, like, a little outside of his... Land. Space a little outside of it and have a laser out for him so that now he has to be scared of you. Right, right. So, it, okay. the thing, it's it's not about hitting him, just getting the hit. It's like... You want it to create a situation where you have a high probability of getting a hit. Yeah, that makes sense. So it's like creating the situation where you have a high probability of winning is... and Okay, so it's like you can guarantee you put yourself in a situation where you have a high probability of winning. Or, sorry, a higher probability of winning. Like a 70% chance of winning. So, so you, have a, you have a risk-free way of getting into a 70-30 situation... Or you have a risky way of getting a 100-0. You know? Right. And it's like, way better to just take the 70-30 over and over and over and over. Because if you're 70-30ing the guy, you'll just win a, every game. Yeah, well, exactly. technically you'll win 70% of the games, but... That's plenty. <laughs> no, <I get> plenty. <laughs> that's enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is like tangentially related, but like, so on Yoshi's... Uh, when Fox is on the top platform, I actually feel like I, it's harder to space just outside of the edge of his range when he could fall where he could fall through because the stage is so much smaller. So like I don't really feel like I know what to do when I'm on Yoshi's trying to deal with Fox on the platform that's on top. I know that like I guess um, it's also easier to move to platforms myself there. Like, like I can directly challenge it more easily with like my own full hop. But yeah, I don't know like. Do you have any thoughts on like what Falco could do that's better when Fox is on top platform besides just like yeah. also move to platform? Okay. You want the truth? No. Yeah, please. <laughs> There's no better answer. Oh really? <laughs> but the, okay, so the thing is, is that people see this as a negative thing, but and it it, it is kind of negative. Like it, it makes the game less fun necessarily. But it's the same way on both sides, where if Falco is on the top platform of Yoshi's, Fox, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fox is like, what am I supposed to do? Like, if I'm just going to go in the corner to avoid him drop Daring, and then he'll drop Laser, and it's yeah, over, uh, yeah, yeah. you know? And so, the it's that, like... So, basically, the, the top platform in that case is you're wrestling for control of the pace. Fox will go up to the top platform and he'll say, okay, if you just wait down here, I get to choose when it happens. And you go, I don't like that. So you jump up on, you know, like on the side platform or something, you know? And then Fox goes, right. Fox goes, okay, well, if you're going to the, if you're going way up high, I'm going down to center. And then you go, okay, well, then I'm going to wait up here on the platform for you and then he goes oh no i'm in a bad spot i better go up to the platform too but the thing is is that can't go on forever because eventually one of you will find a predictable way in which the other person is coming up or down from the platform and you can yeah. get into these situations but it's 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 a tricky part of the game and it's a part of the game that i've only sort of fully accepted recently that like so I guess from the Falco perspective, it's the same from both sides. Let's say Fox is camping you on the side platform. And you're like, come on, man, fight me. And you're like out of his range. Like, let's say he's up here on this right yeah. platform. And you're right here. And you're like short hop lasering right here. And if he nares off, you can react, dash back, whatever. So you're like not threatened by him at all. But he's like, oh, ha, ha, I'm not even risking myself. Like, I'm fine. And you're like, come on, man. Like, like we're getting older. And, like, you're just, like, shooting yeah. lasers. You're like, play the game. And then he finally comes down from the platform. And you're like, finally, let's play the game. Even though you feel like it's your choice to now play the game, he's controlling the pace. Because, yeah, that makes sense. because he was like, okay, we're not fighting, now we're fighting. And so even if you're approaching him, he got to decide that. And so yeah. you want to be the one to decide that. And so you can do the same thing as Falco. Where you can be like, I'm not playing the game. And he can be like, oh, come on, play the game. And then it's, when you decide to play the game, if he's down to play it with you, you got to control the pace there. Therefore, you're at an advantage. So... 
just don't think of the platforms as necessarily like a vulnerable place. The platforms in this matchup specifically are very much still even. And if someone if someone doesn't want to play the ground game with you, say, fine, I don't want to play, play the ground game with you either, but even though the platforms are neutral, it doesn't mean that they're safe, because Fox, you, you can't shield in midair, and you have to spend all this time coming up and down. You know, like, let's say you, you do a falling dare on the side platform right here, Fox can do a dash dance back air and hit you out of it. So you, it's not like you can camp on the platforms forever. And let's say Fox is here, and then you, you're you shooting lasers, and you're kind of tricking him up, and then like he doesn't want to come down. Now let's say you go to the top platform, and now you're going to do like a short hop down air mix-up right here. He's not very happy about that. Like That's not very comfortable for him, because you're dash dancing here, and you get to control the pace. Oh, so it's a, it's a positional game where it's okay... It's like uh -huh. yeah. I was gonna say it's like I guess it's like literally if you have the high ground, you you actually just have like the ability to set the pace. Right, and so it's sort of like it's part of the wrestling match of like I'm not gonna play the game. Oh, well, I'm not gonna play the game either. But I'm also gonna get like a slight advantage, and then the other person's like, no, I kind of want to. So like just it's like the neutral is the whole stage. It's not just when you're on the ground landing like the lasers. Playing on the platforms is still the same game where you're trying to catch people out of position. But the thing is, is if they just keep transferring between the platforms over and over and over, eventually they'll just get themselves hit. Because they're not applying any pressure to you. Right. And so, the important thing is you don't let them control the pace and you look for openings. But eventually, it reaches a point where someone is looking like some like let's say you're kind of camping the platforms and the fox is kind of looking for a way to get you to stop doing that but he's not hard committing and you go you know he's not really hard committing to getting me off these platforms but i feel like i can start a situation here and he's not really like like what manga will do is he's kind of in these situations where you're like I'm on the platform, I'm on the platform, I'm on the platform. And then he'll be like, and then you come down, and he's like, all right, let's fight. And you go, I'm just kidding. I was, I'm going to go back up to the platforms now. And then he's waiting there already with a move. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's a big part of it. And we're kind of out of time right now. But, uh... <laughs> yeah, for sure. No, but that was a lot. That was really helpful. Yeah, there's a lot of info there, and there's a lot to work on. I didn't even get to really get into too much on the Punish game, but this is definitely enough, if you can just focus on this stuff, to work on this as hard as you can, and just sort of mull on this, and I think you'll make a lot of improvement. Oh, yeah, for sure. I think so. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll, do, I'll do that. I'll work on it. I'll, I might even hit you up for another lesson. Okay, um, that's, yeah, that sounds good. For the help, yeah, sounds good, man. I hope you have a good day, and it was it was fun. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, hope you have a good day, too. Yep. Or I'll see you later. Later.